So one of the big promises that the Brexiteers made and is absolutely on course to be broken was that no matter what happened, no matter what trade deals we would sign, no matter what would happen, we would always try to keep our high level of standards that we had. Unfortunately, of course, this is going to turn out to be a massive lie and it already is starting to fall apart. Why? Because these high standards that we have are put in place predominantly by regulations. It is regulations that has got us such a high food standards compared to the rest of the world and having a high food standard is not a bad thing. It's quite a good thing. It stops companies cutting corners or putting, you know, things that they shouldn't put in there, uh, chemicals or, you know, whatever. You think about it in terms of food. This is something where there should always be very high standards. And we've said constantly since the very beginning, all the way back to 2016, when the Brexiteers cooed about the fact that, oh, we can do this fantastic trade deal with the US. And then the, our response was, well, hold on. If we want to do a trade deal with the US, then we know full well that their agricultural lobby, being very, very powerful over there, will have a massive say in what goes on in that trade deal. And that will mean things like coronated chicken and hormone-grown uh, beef. These are both things that we do not want entering into our food chain at all. Um, you know, because of not only of our high standards, again, chlorinated chicken is not the best way to, you know, deal with chicken to try and get rid of the, you know, the, the bugs, the viruses, the you know, salmonella and things like that. And you've only got to look at the cases of salmonella in the US versus the UK now. I think it was something like the UK has had a total of like, uh, when we looked at it, it was like three cases versus something like a thousand or something like that. It was really, really stark. I mean, I'm sure somebody can find the statistics for me uh, that we went over that time. But yeah, um, that is why we must maintain very good high food standards. And it is very, very worrying that we are seeing um, these standards that we that were promised would be enshrined into law are not being followed and are not being followed up on because these will have huge huge consequences for the health of this country and having high food standards is a really good preventative measure to stop a lot of food-based illnesses and even um other things that are caused by bad diets or other of those other types of things caused by food having and it <laughs> leaves pressure off the nhs so it's another good thing to have you know really good high food standards so before we jump into today's article on the future of uh, our trade uh, practices and these standards that we are doing, uh, we are now, uh, I'm, well, <laughs> well, <laughs> yes, uh, please do uh, remember to hit that like and share button. And of course, down below, there is links to my Patreon page and a one of donation link called Buy Me Coffee, where you can, well, buy me coffee. And thank you to all those people who do support me that way, either whether you visit the links down below or you just press those like and share buttons. Like I say, every little helps. So today's article comes from the Yorkshire Bylines and the title is the Trade and Agricultural Commission report, the future trade deals must maintain high UK food standards. The Trade and Agricultural Commission was established in July of 2020 in response to the considerable public concern over what would happen to food standards once the UK left the EU and the European wide uh, production standards no longer applied here. The task was to advise the UK government on how best to advance the interests of UK farmers, food producers and consumers in future trade deals. So more than 2.5 million people had signed petitions demanding food standards were not diminished. The National Farmers Union ran a particularly influential campaign in support of farmers who were fearful that cheap imports produced in lower environmental and welfare standards would undermine their businesses while exports to the EU would still have to meet its demanding requirements. Again, 
very feasible, um, you know, very obvious worry. This is the thing that we said the Brexiteers wanted to do. And like I say, you haven't heard from the farmers yet. But trust me, we're going to be hearing from the farmers uh, later in the year because, oh, 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 is that going to be fun? Uh, but anyway, it continues. The commission was chaired by Tim Smith, the former chief executive of the Food Standards Agency and Tesco Group's quality director. Its members representing farming, agri-environment, international trade, food and drink and retail and hospitality. The commission took evidence from a range of organisations and individuals and published its comprehensive report on the 2nd of March. Trade is critical to the UK. The UK produces only 55% of its food. Food and drink imports, mainly wine, fish, prepared foods, fresh fruit and vegetables are worth around 47.7 billion to 9.8, uh, uh, <coughs> which totals a which, sorry, which totals a 9.8% of total imports to the country. Around one third of what we consume in the UK comes from EU countries, with our nearest neighbours being Ireland, Germany and the Netherlands, the largest suppliers. The report indicates six principles on which to base our future trade policy. So, uh, in support of these principles, there is a series of recommendations within the five broad areas. The first is that the UK should develop a bold and ambitious agri-food policy. This would lead to a liberalisation of trade and provide a framework for future negotiations that could lead to more opportunities for the food sector while maintaining safeguards on standards. Secondly, the report makes this uh, uh, policy very clear that what that requires the strong UK leadership that works with international organizations to raise standards in environment climate change annual welfare and ethical trading the UK should therefore lead on climate change and food production at the CPO 26 meeting in Glasgow in 2021 and take further opportunities at other important international meetings this year to showcase the UK's high standards and encourage other countries to raise theirs. The report recognises that the UK has some of the highest animal welfare standards in the world, which, some, uh, which go even farther than some of those required under EU law. Also recognising in this process is signing new free trade agreements while leaving the EU. The Commission wants to see this process strengthened by developing uh, impact assessments of free trade agreements on the environment and animal welfare, by encouraging the assurance and certification of schemes. The UK has been a leader in establishing trade assurance schemes, for example, the Red Tractor. The Commission also sees opportunities to increase food exports to new markets and wants the government to facilitate this process. UK food exports have a reputation for quality based on high environmental and welfare standards, as well as heritage and traceability. These quantities need to be protected and promoted and improved by the cooperation between the government and the food industry. The final aim is the alignment of the food agri-policy with policies on trade, aid and climate change. This will strengthen our relationship with developing countries to mutual benefit. Our food supply will be diversified and food security improved, while developing countries will gain increased food export opportunities. The Commission sees this as involving, uh, involving charities, government departments, food industry with, with, and, and with other countries as well. The UK food industry must, uh, must meet with developing countries' interests as well. So, the importance of this report is that it recognises the independence of, agri of the agri-food policy and with so many other policies. We cannot just import food without any thought for its impact on climate change or even the urgent need to maintain the increased biodiversity worldwide. Agricultural production must become more sustainable relating to the impact on soil, water and air quality, ending its uh, misuse of antibiotics in livestock. As the report says, trade deals should be about long-term ambition, not short-term expediency. We must also consider the ethical aspects of the uh, of the trade in food on the well-being of producers and all those working in the food chain. And we cannot go wasting uh, wasting time uh, on about 
uh, the, uh, one, on one third of all food uh, produced if we hope to feed uh, a projected world population of 9.7 billion. The Commission is in no doubt about the importance of food and where it comes from for the British people. It recognises that the public wants to see a system that is fair for all. And under the Commission's recommendations, farmers need not fear that they would be undermined by cheap substandard imports such as chlorinated chicken and hormone-treated beef that we've all heard about. Nor would the public see any reduction in food standards. So the big question is, will this report be accepted? As I said before, absolutely not. We have not seen any, any so far moves to enshrine more of these regulations into UK law, predominantly because, as we said before, we are being run by a government of free market fundamentalists who want to tear down all these regulations because they think that the less regulations you have, then somehow companies are going to, you know, be okay and that they will maintain high food standards but you only have to look again across the pond to america to see that when you have incredibly low standards or no standards at all companies regardless of what sector they will be in will cut corners and put consumers public and even the welfare of their own workers at risk like i say there was a very interesting um report back at the start of, of last year that basically said that they were surprised that the pandemic had not come from America. In particular, its uh, swine production facilities in America because they are in drastic need of some form of improvement because they are petri dishes. And they were the report basically said that it's very likely that the next worldwide pandemic could actually come from America and indeed be traced to one of these swine farms. So, let's go jump back into the uh, article. So, the government has not yet responded to the report. The question is whether the recommendations fit with their view of the future trade deals. They will be seen as constraining negotiators faced with, uh, faced with comparing demands from other countries. Or how will Conservative MPs such as Kevin Hawken and Thrask and Malton, who received hundreds of emails on the subject and who welcomed the establishment of the Commission, side with their constituents and put pressure on ministers to accept the recommendations? The, com the Commission is now has a statutory role to scrutinise future trade deals and advise on their impact on food standards. But... Its credibility will be seriously compromised from the start if the government does not respond positively to this report. So let's see what will happen and let's hope that this is an excellent opportunity to put a fair, ethical and sustainable global Britain into actual some form of practice. Of course, I don't have any hope for that at all because, like I say, we know who is running things. It's free market fundamentalists and, like I say, you've had... Uh, papers recently championing Liz Truss, who's done 66, quote, trade deals. I'd like to point out these are not trade deals, most of which uh, of what has been signed are essentially what we will do is we'll keep the trading practices that we currently have with you in place while we sort something out new. That is what has essentially has been put in place. So these are not trade deals. They are just will keep things as they are for the time being. And most of them, by the way, have been done with small, very small, tiny African countries. You know, like Mozambique and Kenya. Again, we don't do a lot of trade with them. Why? Because they're not our closest country. As I've stressed before, trade gravity is a thing. Countries always trade with their closest neighbours doesn't matter about Boris's fan fantastical buccaneering ideas in the Indo-Pacific region, it's not going to pan out very well. And like I say, we've seen the figures. We're literally talking less than 1% in terms of our economy. You know? <laughs> so, like I say, Brexit is, a, is basically an exercise in fanciful thinking that somehow um, breaking free from the EU will somehow mean that we can go and join in on the Indo-Pacific region. And we aren't a Pacific country. We are a European country. And as we've said before, 
none of the Brexit benefits are going to come to this country anytime fast or anytime soon, shall we say, because in reality, there are no Brexit benefits for anyone in this country, except unless you're a very large company that has already been trading abroad. Like I say, you've only got to look at the videos we did on the Japan deal, how bad that was. So, like I say, I do not expect the government to keep its promises on any of these uh, regulations at all. So, as always, thanks for watching. Uh, do please do remember to hit that like and share button on your way out. And, of course, down below there is a link to my Patreon page, as well as a one-off donation link called Buy Me Coffee, where you can, well, buy me coffee. And thank you to those people who do support me in that way. And, as always, we'll see you all next time.